When working with well log data, have you wondered how to combine formation data with well log data? Well, we're going to see how to do that in today's video. Hey friends, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. When working with well log data, we often want to integrate multiple data sources, and that includes formation data. So when we're looking at well log data within last files, we have regularly sampled data. However, when we start looking at formation data, we only have single points. So we have a formation name, a specific depth, and then we have the next formation at another depth. And when working with that data, we want to combine them into a single data frame to make it easier to work with. And also, when we're trying to apply machine learning, we want to have that formation information within that data frame so that we can do something like one hot encoding, which can then allow us to use that formation data within a machine learning model. And the process of combining these data types is very simple. We basically use what's known as the apply function within pandas. And this allows us to create a simple function where we can loop through each of the formations within our data table and then write out the formation name into the actual data frame with the while log data. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can do this. The first step of our tutorial is to import the libraries that we're going to be working with. In this case, we're going to be working with Lasio, which is going to be used to load in our last files, and Pandas, which is going to be used to load in our CSV file, and then work with the data to manipulate it into a single data frame. So when we run that, the libraries are imported, and the next step is to import the data. So to do this, we need to call upon lasio.read, and then pass in the file name. In this case, we're using one of the wells from the vol field. And at the end, you can see that I have appended .df, which basically takes the last object and converts it to a pandas data frame. So if we run that and then view that data frame, so if we call upon df19sr, we can see that we've got depth without the h as the index, and then we have our individual logging curves, acoustic compressional, caliper, density, gamma ray, etc. So what we want to do is move this depth column into its own column and then re-index the data frame. And we can do this by calling upon reset index on the data frame. And if we set in place is equal to true, what it's going to do is it's going to apply that reset index to this actual data frame rather than making a copy of it. So if we run that and then view the data frame afterwards, we can now see that we've got depth or depth in its own column and the index is now going from 0 to 29,753. So now that we've got the log data loaded in, we now need to load in our formation data. And the formation data is stored within an Excel sheet where we've just got the formation name and its associated depth. So we just need to load that in using read underscore CSV. And this particular file does not have any headers within it. So we specify that the header is none. And then we create new names for each of the columns. So the first one is going to be the formation name. And then the next one is going to be the actual depth that that formation occurs at. And one thing that we have to do in order to make this merge successful is we need to convert the depth column within this CSV file to a float. Now you can see up here on the depth column, we've got floating point numbers where we've got 102.3092, 102.4616, etc. So the depths that are listed within this file are just simple integers. And this is what this line is doing, is we're converting those integers to floats. So we run that, and then we view that data frame, and we can see now that we've got our formation names and we've got our depths. Even though there's no values after the decimal place other than zero, we still need to have it as a float in order to allow us to merge the data together. So within this, we've got 23 individual rows or in individual formations, starting from 846 meters all the way down to 4,340. So in order to start bringing this into the actual well log data frame, we need to create a function. And then this function is going to be used to go through the well log data frame and then check the depths and then add the formation into it. With this function, we're basically calling it add formations to data frame, and then we're passing in a depth value, and we'll see how that's passed in in a minute. And we're returning a string, which is going to be the formation name. So we need to take our formations data frame, and then split that out into two lists, one for formation depths, and the other for formation names. And this just makes it a little bit easier to work with, with the indexing. So next we need to create a for loop, where we're going through the index and the depth, information depths. So this special function here called enumerate 
allows us to create this index value or I value here. When we go into this for loop, we're going to do a series of checks. So the first one is going to check if we're at the last formation. Now this is done first so that when we do reach that last formation, we've, we don't receive any errors. Otherwise, if we had it at the end of our for loop, then we may encounter an error when we try to check the next formation. Now with this part of the for loop, we're just checking if we're at this last formation. And if we are, then we're just going to return that formation name all the way to the end of that of the well log data frame. Then we're going to check if we've got anything before the first formation. So at the moment, the formation Ute starts at 846 meters. However, we still have log measurements before that. So we just need to set that to a blank value. If we don't encounter any of these two issues, we can then move on to checking whether the current depth is between the current and the next formation. So within this loop, we are looping over each of the formations. So the first one is going to be Utsera, and then once we get to 846 meters, then we're going to check if the depth value within the well log data frame is between that depth of 846 meters and between the next one, which is undifferentiated which is 1,080 meters. And if it is between that, then we're going to return the formation name at this index position i, which is going to be Utsira. And then that process repeats. So then we're checking if the log, if the depth value is between these two formations. If it is, then set it to undifferentiated and then we'll keep repeating that until we get to the last formation. So if we run this cell, we don't get anything back at the moment. And what we need to do is apply that to the data frame. And we can do that using the dot apply method. Now there are a number of different ways we could do this within the data frame, but this is a very simple way of doing it where we create a function and we apply that function to the actual data. So we can see that we're calling upon depth curve. So within our well log data, and then we're applying the add formations to DF function. Now you'll notice that in the function, we're, we're expecting an argument for the depth value. Well, this is handled here with this first part of the call. So we're using this as our input and then we're applying this function. We can then run that. And then when we call upon our data frame, we can see that we've now got a new column called formation. And we can see that in the first five rows, we don't have any formation name as these are before the first formation within the table. Then at the bottom, we can see that we've got the Skagorak formation for the last five rows, which is what we would expect as there's nothing after the Skagorak in this particular table. So there may be another depth that's missing here that we may want to stop this early and then go into the next formation. Uh, that is something that we would have to add in into the original formation data table. So we just want to check that this is actually working. So let's have a look at a specific depth range. We'll go between 4339 and 43. Four, one. And we can see that we've gone from the, the Huggin formation to the Skagorak. And we can see that our depth here is 4339. And then the next depth is 4340. So the Skagorak should start at 4340. And we can repeat this again with, let's have a look at between the Heather and the Huggin formation. So if we look at a depth of uh, 4316, so if we change that to 4316, to 4318 and run that. We can see that we're going from the Heather formation into the Huggin formation uh, between 4317 and 4316, which ties in here with 4317 for our transition. And that's all there is to it when you start to combine these data frames. It's very simple. Now you may want to add in the individual well name if you're working with multiple wells and that gets a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with the formations. So you need a slightly more complicated function. So the benefit of having the formation name within our data frame is not only for our plotting, but we can also use it for machine learning where we can convert the string into a numeric value through a process of one hot encoding but that will be covered in a future video. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more content from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So as always, thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.